Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whenever this reaches you. This is number four in the Personal Prophecy series. This teaching is called, Why Would God Choose Me for Personal Prophecy? That's very similar to number three, but it's got a different aspect to it that I want to cover in this uh, video, no matter how long it is. Uh, each of my teachings you may not know, all I've got is the heading, all the inspiration for what I say comes from my own mind and the Holy Spirit, so I don't really know what I'm going to say until I say it. Uh, just sort of fill you in if you're watching the video series, so where does he get all this information? Well, the Holy Spirit helps me. Why would God choose me for personal prophecy? Well, let me ask you this question. Why is a boy out herding sheep, looking after sheep, and when the sheep gets attacked by a lion, he attacks a lion? When the sheep gets attacked by a bear, he attacks the bear and kills the bear. Why, why would a famous prophet come to his father's house and look at six or seven of his brothers and not find any of them worthy to be king? and suddenly ask of the father, God hasn't selected any of your sons, have you got any more that you haven't shown me? Oh yeah, just David out herding the sheep. We didn't think to bring him in. David is revered by God as one of the most holy prophets and kings. I don't know if he's revered as a prophet, but he's certainly revered as a king. All through the Old Testament, it says God uh, was angry with the Israelites. Every second king disappointed God. But because of his love for David, he, he loved the Israel people and didn't fully judge them or wipe them out from the existence of the earth like he did in Noah's flood. He kept on saying because of David, because of his love for David. What made David so special to be the king of Israel, to lead Israel? What made David so special to have, have a son called Solomon, the wisest man or one of the wisest men that has ever walked this earth? You know, the difference between Solomon and every other philosopher is, philosophers just talk about knowledge and sort of collected wisdom. Solomon's wisdom never falls to the ground. It's always right. Philosophy can just be ideas. Solomon's teaching is true. Now David had Solomon. He came out of his loins. He actually came out of Bathsheba, the wife he had an affair with and killed the husband. Uh, Solomon, I think, was the second son of Bathsheba. The first one died of judgment from God. So why would God choose you for personal prophecy? The same reason he chose David. He wants, he, he, see, let me tell you something. God delights in making little people big people. When God makes a nobody into a somebody, God gets the glory. The person doesn't get the glory. If you come from a weak, rich and wealthy family, if you come from nobility or, or kingship or, or a royal family or a really billionaire's family, it's nothing for you to take over your father's empire and rule the world or rule a certain segment in the marketplace. That's not held in high esteem because you had your father's money, you had good education, you had all the best of the, uh, your father's businessmen supporting you. It's no big thing. But when a nobody rises up and starts his own company and dominates in the world, like Bill Gates of Microsoft, Suddenly, something's fantastic. Now, when God takes a nobody and makes a somebody, God gets the glory. So why would God choose you for personal prophecy? So that he would receive glory. See, God's a bit of a selfish God. He likes all the, he likes all the glory. <laughs> That's a joke, okay? It's probably in bad taste. You probably don't like that. I had a schizophrenic tell me that 
he'd never praise a, a God so, so vain that wants all the worship of men and men have got to do everything his way or it's the highway and uh, he wants all the men to say how good he is and he could never serve a God like that that's so up himself, so egotistical he said and it really hurt me, you can tell the hurt is still in me and uh, I had to uh, reconcile my ideas of God God is just a person Jesus, his son, was a real human being God wants to reach down and touch human lives most Christians can't hear from God directly if they be honest they haven't heard God speak to them. Why does he want you to have the gift of personal prophecy so you can speak his words to the common person, to the Christian and the non-Christian? God wants to choose people who've got a heart for helping and encouraging. Now everybody likes encouragement. Everyone likes to be lifted up when they're feeling down. Everyone likes to know the right direction to take when you've got two career choices. A prophet can tell you which career, which city, which town, which choice to make, which is God's choice. Having that ability to make decisions for people, godly decisions, God's decision, not advice, not knowledge, but God's wisdom, is a powerful thing. And why would God choose me for personal prophecy? Because he delights in making something of nobodies. Ah, you can get puffed up and full of vanity, being someone who can prophesy. It's a mystical and supernatural ability to be able to have words of knowledge and know things about people that they've never told you. Itching ears, eh? Hey? You know, sermons tickle itching ears. There's a lot of people prophesying over the world and prophesying lofty things over people and that they're not true. There's a lot of power in the ability to prophesy and being recognized as a prophet or someone who can prophesy. You can have a real ego trip. You can really control people with it. And prophecy, the gift of prophecy in the wrong hands can do a lot of damage. Yeah, so, um, why would God choose you? Because you've chosen Him and He wants to use you to glorify His name and to build up His own people. Wouldn't you like to build up His people? Wouldn't you like to be used by God powerfully to set the captives free? Someone may be struggling all their life with a sin or a trouble or a heartache and just one prophecy from you, open that wide open and allow the healing balm of the Lord to come in and flow in. You're just like, one page prophecy can just be like medicine for a person and totally fix them up and give them hope for a better tomorrow. Why would God choose you for personal prophecy? Why not choose you? Aren't you the best sort of person? Aren't you someone who goes for the underdog? You mightn't stand up for a person when ten pick, people are picking on him, but when that person's alone in the locker room and all the ten bullies have gone home and you walk in to get changed and here they are crying, aren't you the person that goes up and says, sorry I didn't stand up for you, I feel really sorry for you, can I help you get a lift home, my mum's picking me up in ten minutes, do you want a lift, do you need to go to the... Um, hospital. Aren't you a good hearted person? Don't you want to bless other people? Why would God choose me for personal prophecy? Because he wants thousands of people to prophesy. Thousands and thousands. He wants you. Will you heed his call? Will you ask for the gift? Will you get the free impartation to do personal prophecy? The challenge is out there. Will you take it?